Welcome to Raven on the Rock, Denver's way to expose unique talent and original music from local artists. With your host, Rockin' Raven. You're going to enjoy what you are about to hear on Raven on the Rock. Brought to you by Rockin' Raven Productions and the Scoop 303. Okay, we're back. Are we back? We're back. We're back. <laughs> yes. We're here. We're back. Paper, we're God making it. Yeah. Yes, we're going to do this if it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, I can hear us. Okay, we're good. Yeah. All right. Hey. All right. Welcome. Hey welcome back welcome to Radio and, Land. Yes, welcome to Raven on the Rock an hour late, which is okay because we're going to go an hour over. Sorry, country people, but we're going to have fun tonight. Yeah, for some rock. Enough of that country stuff for today. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. We can go back to country later. <laughs> so I'm in the studio today with Up David. Hello. I can't hear me. Hey. Can you guys hear me? I can totally hear you. Can hear you. Yeah, okay. You I'm just probably a little stressed. No. no. So we're in the stack. There is no stress. <laughs> I feel like there was a huge technical difficulty. We couldn't get on the air for an hour. So yeah, nothing to worry about. <laughs> It's all good. And I didn't swear once. Well, maybe once. No, no, no you were good. You were, you were very well behaved. Right now. Thank you. Thank you. Better than us. So there we go. So we're in the studio today with uh, David. Three of the four. Rex could not be with us because he is not feeling very well today. But we have a surprise for him later. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, wives of these three. Thank you for not uh, being upset. They're going to be a little late tonight. Thank you, baby. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, we got awesome lives. Yeah, we do. Totes. Joe says it's still bumpy, but I don't know why. Bump. I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, the, the crackling noise. Hmm. I don't know. Well. It's yeah, so it, it is. And I have a feeling that, I have a feeling that it's on the server end, and, and there's server. nothing I can do about it right now. Rock. So we're just going to go for yeah. it and rock. Clicky. Bumpy. So Bumpy. tell me again about Of David. Of David. I missed it the first time. Mm. All right. Well. When did Of David start? We, we promised. Oh, okay. Of David started. Oh, it was about 11 years ago. Um, we started out doing. It was, it was. We were actually. Let me back up a little bit. We're actually a. It, uh, we get called heavy Christian. That's kind of the, the, the term that's been coined for Of David, heavy Christian. It's not Christian metal, it's not Christian rock. And it's no pun to <laughs> go there. But anyway, we play um, heavy rock. People have said it sounds like a mix between, oh gosh, Disturbed Beats, Metallica, Pillar, EOD. I don't know. What would you guess? Yeah. Yeah. All of those. And, that's and pretty spot on. Yeah. 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 And it's really neat now. And we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it later, but. Um, you know, I joined the band in December and Rob came in in April um, with, with a lot of different influences. So as, you know, as much as we love uh, Let It Begin album, and I hope you all love it too and are getting a chance to listen to it, and we'll hear more of it tonight. I mean, just having the opportunity to, for Rob and I to give input to, to Rex and to you, Tony, as we're writing new songs, you know, we're hearing little bits of a lot of different influences from you know, Maiden to Queen's right to Metallica to you know whoever. Yeah, yeah it's a really cool blend too. I mean, as as we write new material, which by the way, there is new material coming even after the latest Let It Be an album. Absolutely. And uh, so far, it's uh, blowing away what we have on Let It Be an album. I oh, can't yeah. wait to turn it loose. I mean, yeah. It's good stuff. Oh. These guys helping write it, especially, it's just amazing stuff. So. Couldn't make it happen without these guys. And I want Rob to say a few things about him, David, because we stomped on his toes last interview, apparently, and didn't give him a chance to say much. Of talking time last interview. Well, when did but, you join the band? Uh, I joined back in April. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, my wife and I, we had moved out to uh, Colorado. We spent the last, I don't know, nine years out in Ohio. Um, and we're kind of mutts. So um, hmm. I'm from New York. Uh, my wife is from Minnesota. Um, I'm actually active duty military which is kind of strange to a lot of people being in a, in, in a pretty active band. But we ended up moving out here, um, and you know I've been playing for the last 20 years. Um, not to show my age whatsoever, but so I've been playing for the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah. You're the youngest yeah. guy in the band. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm 21. I've been playing for the last 20 years. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, 
Yeah, so, you know, we moved down here. I thought it came when I was a fetus. <laughs> in the womb. But we moved down here, um, and, you know, a, a huge itch of mine has always been to um, be actively playing, writing, uh, performing, um, everything in between. So, kind of uh, went out, um, started searching around, you know, everything from Facebook to Craigslist to Band Mix, everything in between, you know, what's good that I can grab and get my hands in. Um, and came across these guys, and I guess this had been a really old ad that the previous drummer had answered to as oh. well. Oh. So yeah, that, yeah, it was at least seven years old. <laughs> crazy. It was, Serious? Oh, yeah. It was just something that was floating out there that we had forgotten about. <laughs> so, yeah, I, so I answered it, and then a few days later, they were like, hey, why don't you come on down to um, our manager's house? Um, and we've got uh, um, a pretty serious studio kit here. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll chat. We'll, we'll jam out a little bit and see where things go from there. So, um, and I said, you know, hey, absolutely. I'm gonna go grab a pair of sticks, and you know, we, we kind of jammed and jived and talked for a really long time yeah. um, about, you know, past projects. You know, where we currently see ourselves going. You know, what we stand for, what we do, kind of thing like that. And we've always just kind of clicked uh, ever since. So, cool. That was in yeah. April. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, he's been an integral part of the band oh, since absolutely. that night. Yeah. The writing process, everything is just going. I mean, it's it's amazing how quickly things fall into place when the right people are put in front of you. You know. And well, yeah. The right people are definitely involved right now because, like I said, can't wait to turn some of this new stuff loose. It is off the shelf. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah. All right, I got to tell you a little story about when I first met David. Oh, here we go. Oh no. Yeah, I'm still pretty new too. I just joined the band back in December. So no secrets. No these secrets. old stories, Rob and I have no idea about. So this will be fun. <laughs> okay, well, I don't rem- remember actually how um, it came about that you wanted me to come to your show at the Buffalo Rose. <sighs> yeah, that was oh my gosh, a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> just a few years ago. Well, I had known a couple of Christian rock bands, right? Mm-hmm. Big air quotes there, right? Big air quotes. <laughs> Christian rock band. Well, I walk into Buffalo Rose. Here's a seven foot guy with Aww. chains hanging off of his <laughs> jeans, and <laughs> earrings, and a necklace. Well, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> haven't changed a bit, huh? <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> Oddly enough, I'm wearing the exact same thing that was that night. Yeah. No, Were you? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, but I, I was I was very impressed um, with your. It, it wasn't anything I was totally expecting. Ah, well, thank no, you. No, and it was it was you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like expecting all the buttoned up, clean cut. Oh, you definitely. Know, and, oh, yeah. yeah. That's not us. Yeah. yeah. We kind of break the mold for what some people see as a Christian band. Uh huh. And we just what well, it's been described as like a battle cry or battle music. Uh huh. And as a Christian band. Uh, you know, we don't come straight out of the Bible with a lot of the songs that we do, but what we are doing is we're taking a personal testimony, putting um, God's twist in our lives into it, and from there, telling the story. Um, so it's it's truly personal testimony with a twist, or not with a twist of any kind, honestly. It's just straight up what God did for us. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's, and then it's going story. out there and telling it in, an aggressive way? Is that a good way to put it? Aggressive? Well, yes. Mildly aggressive? Sometimes. I, don't, I don't take it as aggressive. <laughs> not, not like fire and brimstone no, aggressive. No. I would say just more you know, aggressive guitars, aggressive drums. Yeah. Right. It's something that you can dig your heels into. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we don't collect tithes and offerings. Yeah. Each other no. Like that. <laughs> you don't have to write songs that, that sound like you two to play Christian music. You, know? you, can, you can play metal and, and you know, yeah. get that... that, that emotion out you know and, and use it and feel it and right you know. yeah and tell your story yeah you know, that's the thing well and that's just it your way um the button-up shirt people mm-hmm. reach a certain demographic right they, right. they reach certain people that's, right you know, and you they, reach the other certain people right, right. you know so yeah, we get out and we do what we do. You know, there's nowhere that we won't play with a few exceptions in there. You know, there's right. just some things that intrinsically kids' birthday parties. No. We have actually done a <laughs> birthday party. Yes, in their backyard really? on their back deck. Had the cops called on us because 
apparently somebody down the street heard us cussing a whole lot. No, that no. didn't happen. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, so that was, we had the cops called on us. That was kind of neat. Yeah. It was fun. We actually yeah, did an outdoor happy. gig at a church and had the cops called on us one time, so. We're just too loud. Yeah. That's really? It was fun. How funny. <laughs> but yeah, so we do birthday parties. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. <laughs> we did once. Yes. Or you did once. Right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and play You Took It Away. Um, right. That's awesome. my favorite. Is it? That's actually, that's uh, to me, that is the funniest song to play off the album. For me, from a drummer's perspective. Right. <laughs> hmm. Well, alrighty then. Why did you write this song? Does this have any special meaning? You Took It Away. The words, I mean, it, it tells its own story. It really, it's about how. Um, no matter what, no matter how hard things get, no matter what's going on in your life, if you just let it go to God, which is the huge Christian cliche, just let it go, just give it to God, just give it to God. There's a lot to that. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot to that. So if you really do it, and the second you take it back, give it back to him. The second you take it back again, give it back to him. Do it over and over and over again until you finally get it. He'll take it away, and everything else is taken care of from that point on. So that's what this song is about. You know, you said you have to keep doing it over and over and over. I think it's an epiphany, right? Yeah. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, somewhat. But it, it, it's, it's, you know how they say if you look in the mirror and say something about yourself enough, you start to believe it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's practice. It's, it's pra exactly. That's the best way to put it. It's practice. Right. And eventually you perfect it. And then once that perfection is there, you truly understand what it means to let it go. And then you can look back and say, you took it away. Thank you. You know. Exactly. All right. Here's of David with you to get away off their new CD, Let It Be. There's something happening. Are we living a
we're back. Gotta get rid of the gremlins. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween is. Yes, that was cool. That is cool sometimes. Um, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, the song was cool. Oh, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Do you, you want to share what Rex shared? Oh, yeah. Rex sent a text. Since he couldn't be here, his, his voice is via text at this point. In addition to all that about the song, he wrote, plus, we rewrote the whole song <laughs> from the first version. Uh, musically, the lyrics stayed the same. But, yes, Rex stepped in, and, and we had a bunch of old material, and, and Rex stepped in and started throwing his guitar stuff into it. And we took a lot of stuff and turned it completely on its ear, and it's just like, okay, that song is actually really cool now. Yeah. You know, whereas before it was kind of like, eh, yeah, that's a song, but now it's it's a song, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. But that's what Rex does. That dude is uh, an incredible guitar player, and we'll just kind of be noodling around at rehearsal and practices, and this guy will just play the most jaw-dropping uh, sets and, and, and solos that I can't even describe. I mean, literally, the dude can put, like, 30-year guitar veterans to shame with some of the stuff that he just thinks – isn't really that great. Like I, I kind of snuck a video of him a couple practices ago of him yeah. just, just shredding it up on his guitar. And he was like, you know, at the end of it, my mouth was just wide open. And he was like, dude, don't post that. That's uh, I'm like, what? That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We love Rex. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Should we say hi to Rex? Hey, hi, Rex. Rex. Hi, Rex. Should we say... Happy birthday, Rex! Oh, yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Rex! Yeah. Somebody had a birthday. He's getting even older today. Mm -hmm. The old man in the band is even older. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you can't be here. I would have baked you a cupcake, but um, the boys are going to sing happy birthday to you. Mm. Yes. This is plural. Yes. So everybody, okay. Let's you do ready? it. Okay. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rex. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Right. And we're really sorry that you're sick, Rex, but yeah. um, next time you can come. Yeah, I guess. So well, that's good. That means you get it next time. <laughs> you do. <laughs> awesome. You do. So we're going to be right back with more of David right after these messages. Pepperdine's integrated approach to business solutions offers you access to an array of products and services through decades of experience, state-of-the-art production processes, as well as inspired technological innovation. Whether your business or organization requires printed marketing materials, promotional ad specialty items, commercial signage, stamps, or simply functional internal forms, their dedicated staff will provide the level of personal service and support your project deserves. Pepperdines is located at 790 Umatilla Street, Denver, Colorado, 80204, or call 303-595-3663. Hi, I'm Kenny Lee. You're listening to Raven on the Rock. Yes, you are. Hey. I hope. <laughs> we all hope so. They got together in the early 70s, and, and you know, just the music... I listened to it as a kid, you know, all the, you know, Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and Crosby, Stills, Nash and the Beatles, you know, that stuff was always playing in my house, in the family car. I mean, you know, my, my dad was former heavy, but my, my my parents, my aunts and uncles were all former heavy. They always listened to cool music and they always had music on. So, you know, that was something when I got older. I mean, I actually found an old bass guitar of my father's, you know, just yeah. in a corner in an attic that he had gotten from a, a shipmate in the Navy. And I started messing around with it, and I didn't know what I was doing. You know, one of the string broke, so I hooked it back together with fishing wire. Whatever and, works. And I used, you know, I, I grabbed a quarter to use as a pick because, you know, in, at that time I didn't know you could finger pluck a bass. Now I don't even use a pick at all anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I, same thing, I, I took lessons for a couple of months and then... <laughs> taught since then for the last uh, 25 years um been just playing and having a good old time and yeah just music's always there awesome guess who's up oh no yeah well for me oh gosh i you know steve music was always in our house you know mom and dad always listened to records and, and it's a big black cd for all the, all the yeah. people that don't know what a record is <laughs> um but you know, and then Vinyl's going to back, church. 
And then going to church, singing the hymnals. You know, I, I was raised in a church of Christ where you keep your back straight, your mouth shut. You don't ask any questions. How'd that work for you, Tony? Well, <laughs> I don't Can belong you to the imagine? Church of Christ anymore. Not that the Church of Christ is wrong. I don't want to go finger pointing or anything like that. But I, I was raised where it was all hymnals. And early on, uh, I was introduced to a band down there called Acapella. Now, everybody knows Acapella is just music or, uh, vocals with no instruments. Right. But they actually had the name Acapella, spelled a little differently. And um, it, was, it just amazed me how they could emulate musical instrument sounds with their voices and then also the harmonies that they had it just kind of took me to a different place uh -huh. you know i just kind of you could feel it you just kind of like a warm blanket you know you just you feel it and you know it right um and through that i just kind of we had an old piano you know that's you know the old piano sitting in the house and started plinking around on it one day and my mom happened to kick her head back and say hey that's actually pretty good and that was that's all the inspiration i needed at that point you know cool. i just kind of started playing around with it and very good. Came up with my own ideas, and yeah. I, I put it down for a long time, trying to figure out what it was that I was supposed to do in life. And then, you know, the keyboard sat in the corner for a long time. You know, literally, Tony, Tony, Tony. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, the first I, time I saw you, you were playing the keyboard. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was an integral part of the show at the beginning. Now it's kind of it's taken, it's gone by way of the dodo. I think at this point, <laughs> it may be coming back though. So yeah. But anyway, um, you know, yeah, I just kind of. Uh, put it away for a while and then finally picked it back up and, and had that moment, uh, sat down moment with God and said, hey, let me know what I'm supposed to do here. Half an hour later, I plinked out this song and um, it, it was a very, it was a kind of like Patrick O'Hearn or New Ages type music or whatever. It's very, you know, it's very melodic and, right. and soft. And, and incidentally, we had it played at my, my wife and uh, at our wedding, actually. So it was nice. just kind of neat to, and it was, Incidentally, the day that she went to go look for her wedding dress, and she came back a half hour later, and she's such a rock star, she found her wedding dress in a half hour, so I'm bragging my wife there, <laughs> found a super cheap one, and in a half an hour, and it was beautiful, it was amazing, uh -huh. stunning. But anyway, she came home, and I had written this song, and I said, you gotta check this out. And of course, she's wanted to share with me the details of her dress, and I'm like, no, you gotta check this out. And so, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so that's kind of where, that's what, that's what... <laughs> That's how music got its hooks back in me from a nice. childhood. So. Now, in the beginning when you were talking and you said um, you were talking about the religion that you were brought up with and not putting it down, what right. did you, how did you put that? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say that any one, you know, practice is wrong. I don't want to, you know. Exactly. Do you, um, I mean, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's you. Right. It's right. what what you feel, what you believe, what's in your heart. Right. Well, you know, the Bible has a specific set of rules. It does. There's no denying that. There, it's it's pretty much black and white. Um, a lot of times people will ask me what church I belong to. My answer is yes. And the reason for that <laughs> is because there's only supposed to be one. Exactly. Way back when, when the uh -huh. very first church got started, it was, you know, God basically said, hey, go, go teach mm -hmm. and go, go share this thing. So it, it, man has come in and created this thing we call religion mm -hmm. and, and shunned or shied so many people away from it or, right. or scared people off from it because it does look like a cult to some mm -hmm. or whatever. But, you know, a good way to describe who of David is, is that in a nutshell. We are very non-religious people. Uh, we're normal guys who lean on God. Mm -hmm. You know, we read, we read our Bibles. We do what, what God's putting on our heart is right. Mm -hmm. And we do that, you know, and if God tells us at some point, hey, what you're doing isn't right, we listen and we move on, you know, it's, it's pretty simple, actually. It's, mm -hmm. People always make such a big deal out of it. It's so hard to be a Christian. It's really not, you know, your wants and needs change and all that different stuff. So, but going back to the, the original question, yeah, that's, it's, it's only supposed to be one. Mm -hmm. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. So stand tall, right? Stand tall. Exactly. All right. That's kind of a mantra of ours now. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> We're gonna well, play. it's easy for Tony because he's eight feet tall. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us have to work at it. Yeah. Right. He had a duck under my disco ball in the music room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to play Stand Tall right now by of David. Deception and loss of my mind 
We got, got there's that cool effect. <laughs> we on got him. you. So we got Rex on the Hello. line. Hey Rex. All right. Hey there. Happy birthday. Well, thank you, and what a birthday it's been. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> bet, man. How you feeling? Oh, I'm doing okay now. I spent the first half of the day kind of in the fetal position and then uh, <laughs> went, to the, went went to the doctor thinking I had strep and you know, waited there, got the uh, swab with the gag reflex. Oh. And, yeah. And and then the doctor comes in and goes, you don't have strep? I'm like, great. I'm glad I just wasted an hour here. And he's like, well, what's the deal? I'm like, well, I was sore throat. My wife had strep. I thought I caught it from her. And uh, well, tell me what else. Oh, I got a one-year-old that just started daycare. He's like, oh, well, great. There. You got a cold and you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, you gosh, and a nice little $25 copay to find that out. Well, Rex, I just want to tell you I'm very impressed that you even went to the doctor because most men just don't do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there is <laughs> that. a lot of truth in that. Well, so Rex, uh, when did you join this band? I joined in, I think the first show I played with you guys in was October 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, was kind of at my end with bands. I Every band I'd ever been in had been the train wreck yard sale ending, you know, the skis in a tree, the, the goggles are over here, <laughs> like, a, like a bad ski accident. They never seemed to end. And so I was like, I just don't know. And I, so I started pursuing, uh, like, you know, getting thematic elements, TV film, backdrop stuff for, for uh, that kind of thing. And then out of the blue... 
uh, Tony got in touch with me, and uh, it was just it was just kind of it, it hit me different. At first, it was like, oh, another band, I don't know. And then it was like, well, wait a minute, this is different because this is this is you know playing for your faith, and and uh, and I mean that you know I, once once we met and talked our first meeting, it just kind of I knew it was right. I knew it was what we needed to do, and I think it reflects in the music. So yeah, what did you play before, but Rex? What we've written and what Tony and I have, you know, uh, been through in the, the first album of material, uh, our ability to write together. So, um, and then obviously adding, adding our fine military personnel here to the band <laughs> has actually given yeah, us yeah. some discipline. So uh, <laughs> you know, we actually, we actually stick to what we, uh, what we promised. So what did you? What kind of music did you play before? It was it was hard rock. I, I was, you know, in, it, it, in the when when grunge happened eons ago in the you know in the nineties, it wasn't cool to shred anymore. And so I kind of went the Dave Matthews route and started playing a lot more acoustic material and and played in you know bands as a as a as a side project, working in the corporate world, that kind of thing, and. Um, and so it kind of centered around, you know, bluesy rock. Um, but uh, around 2008, 2009, I started playing in a band that was uh, uh, a metal band, and that's when I started learning how to play seven string. And, you know, everything just started taking off in, in my brain when it came to uh, hard music again. And, and coincidentally, and not so coincidentally, we gigged with uh, David a couple of times, and so that's how I met Tony. And that's how that connection started. And a year later, when uh, you know, when he called, um, you know, it was destiny. Isn't it amazing how how life takes you in the right paths, and you don't, you know, I always say people pray, but they don't never listen for the answer. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so true. absolutely so true. true. <laughs> yeah. So so you were supposed to play with those other bands to meet Tony. Very much. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad because uh, he blows me away every single time I hear him play the guitar. I mean, yeah. I'm absolutely stunned yeah. when this guy plays. So. Yeah, when I saw him, he wasn't one of those button-up shirt either. No, no. No? No, no. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Well, we're going to play uh, Set It Free. Set Me Free. Set Me Free. Oh, it's my medicine in this whole night. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. So maybe it's nothing to the influence of painkillers, but we're all okay. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's so great. it's set me free from the album, let it begin. <laughs> and Steve now has a new job. Hey, yes. So I'm just I'll, I'll be <laughs> filling in for Raven whenever needed. <laughs> whenever she's too heavily under the influence, I, we'll just I rock out appreciate together. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right. Well, we're good. What do you? What? How do you feel about this? This song, Rex, set me free. Uh, this one is another rewrite. Um, you took it away and set me free. Who were two songs when I joined the band that we uh, were like, boy, everybody sure likes to get up and go get a drink or go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, these two songs in particular, yeah. 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 So, so maybe we need to put a little more sizzle in them. So set me free um, was another rewrite, and it's and it's probably one of our raw raw songs. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Um, straightforward, and I mean, Tony can comment more about the lyrics. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those ones like you know, like Rob was saying about the first one, about you took it away. It's a fun one to play, just because it's so raw and it's got so much energy. You can just playing it live is 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 a blast. Yeah. Well, yeah. I got I got to give you guys kudos for even noticing that people are getting up and going to the bathroom <laughs> during their songs. <laughs> mm -hmm. You yeah. know, because a lot of bands will say, you know. Blame right. it on the bar, blame it on the weather. Right, right. And and yeah. for you guys to pay attention to that stuff mm -hmm. and redo it, well, it's ultimately, awesome. Well, ultimately, you know, we're sharing a message. So if there's nobody here to, there to hear the message, right. then we've got to change something that we're doing because we want to keep them in the room. Yeah, yeah. We, we want them to pay attention. Those, right. you know, right. those are our customers, so... <laughs> they're not but just around, so you know, sometimes wrong. you really do just gotta go, don't you? Some, yeah. Rob, yeah. Well, yeah. who's Didum. hit my bathroom twice already. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. It's set me free.
have all four of of David's now. Did I say that right? Of David's. We have all four <laughs> of David's. of David's. Of David's. That's like do of do Divinians. diligence. <laughs> do do diligence. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. I like that. <laughs> so, gentlemen. Mm. Yes. You know, we kind of talked about, you know, what you did um your first bands before of David. Mhm. Have you played with anyone like or open for anyone like special? Oh, I mean, you're no. all special. All your all these <laughs> musicians are special. Well, we open. We've opened for like Random Hero. They're a local band that's kind of taken off right now. Uh, we played for. We opened for LA Guns uh, one time with the Buffalo Rose. Yeah. Same place we met. Uh, that was a very strange show, to put it mildly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys Let's played see. with Blindside, did some mm-hmm. Project 86. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, another mm-hmm. local band that's getting really big right now is Ndaz. It's uh, kind of a strange way to say it, but it's Ndaz, and those guys are, they tear it up, man. It's yeah. a crazy yeah. show for those guys. Um, we've been played on the same stage as Red, mm-hmm. but that was their single, and that was Heaven Fest a couple of years ago. Somebody that we knew was running sound, so as a sound check before Red went on, they played our single break. Oh, cool! Uh, which was kind of neat. So we pseudo went on before Red. Yeah. At that point. So how many <laughs> how many years now have you been in Heaven Fest? Heaven Fest. Heaven Fest. Heaven. It, um, <laughs> <laughs> if you guys could see her sinking behind the microphone, <laughs> greatest thing in the world. Uh, well, see, we've played it like th- th- uh, three. No. Two to- Rex, how many times have we played Heaven Fest? You played both times. Or both, uh, twice. 2011, <laughs> 2011, 2012, and then they, they didn't have it last year. Right. Why not? And I uh, don't know. They were doing a reorganization, actually. In fact, um, they just recently. A couple years, because they haven't. So, um, right. We, we did that. Remember with Nate, we did that one thing at Heaven's Warriors. We opened for uh, David Gray, who's a pretty Jason Gray. artist, too. Yeah, Jason Gray. We opened up for him. Uh, but yeah, so the Heaven Fest thing is going to be actually there is going to be one this coming year at uh, Bandemir Speedway. Really? And yes. Yeah, we're we're trying at this point to find out if we're already in or if we need to re-register or all that good stuff. So we're in the works of getting that taken care of. And there's a chance that we might be opening up for Skillet. Or <gasps> I think. I love yeah. Skillet or, or Matthew West, or Matthew Matthew West, West. at uh, Elitch yeah. Gardens in 2015. There's another event coming up called uh, Heaven's Warriors, and that's what that's going to be with. Cool. All right, well, we are going to go to a couple commercials, and when we come back, we are going to play Break, which I have played on my show quite a few times. All right, excellent. We'll be right back at the Tailgate Tavern and Grill. Enjoy happy hour specials every day, seven days a week, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget Wednesday night at the Tailgate Tavern is karaoke. Sign-up starts at 8. Sunday, band auditions are from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And don't forget, sin night, service industry employees get two for one on wells, drafts, and bottles. 
from 6 p.m. to close on Sunday. A pay stub, name tag, or valid ID is required. The Tailgate Tavern and Grill is located at 19552 East Main Street in Parker, Colorado. This is Remus Tucker. You're listening to Raven on the Rock, only on VRDO Radio. So do we. You wrote that one a long time ago because that's like one of the first songs I started playing four years ago. Right, yeah. That was it was a single that we went out to Salt Lake City and recorded. Uh that was with the old crew uh of David, but Mm -hmm. it has definitely stood the test of time and that's why we wanted to go ahead and not so much resurrect, but just pull it straight into this new uh record that we did. Mm -hmm. Uh and we also are um We've got a couple of other songs on the first EP that we're going to be rewriting and, and kind of turning on their ear. Uh, Break was one that didn't need that to happen. It no, was just, they, it, you know. It worked. It, it just did. worked, right? It does, yeah. yes. And we very much appreciate you playing that for the last four years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, now we're going to play Searching for You. And uh, then we get a little surprise after that song, and we'll be right back with more of David. Uh-oh. <laughs>
And it's time for today's Tony Delk's House Husband Tip of the Day. We have three of them for you. One, a remote-controlled car with a duster attached to it makes for some really fun hardwood floor cleaning. Two, taking a moment out to watch a little Tom and Jerry is perfectly acceptable. Getting nothing done all day because you happen to find the Tom and Jerry Marathon is awesome. And three, the broiler makes awesome garlic toast. One millisecond later, it makes charcoal. Always keep a close eye. And those were today's Tony Delk's House Husband Tips of the Day. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, and um, hopefully that is my last Tony Delk's House Husband Tip of the Day because after this show, he's going to record some for me. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're, and we're going to get Rob and Steve in on it. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have some fun. We'll make it fun. We'll nice. make it fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, so Tony, mm-hmm. how do you love being a house husband? How do I love being a house husband? Like, how much do I love it, yeah. or how do I manage to how, love it? How, <laughs> <laughs> a little of both. Right. Well, you know, I can honestly say that I, I share the house husbandry with uh, Mr. Rex there, too. So yeah. So, he is also a house husband. Uh, and so, we, we throw things off of each other from time to time, you know, yeah. just kind of bounce things off each other. But... Being a house husband, oh my gosh, it, it, it let me know that I didn't know how to do dishes, laundry, floors, uh, get a kid ready for school in the morning, um, <laughs> do the basic things that it takes to run a household, but it didn't take me very long to figure it out right? because necessity is the mother of invention and you just figure things out. Right. So every one of these house husband tips of the day is, is truly drawn from a personal, actual <laughs> thing that has happened. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, and they're still coming. They're still coming almost yes. daily. There's different little things that happen. It's like, wow, I could have done that a whole lot different, and the outcome would have been so much better. Right. You know. Yes, I so, do know because um, you're lucky though. You have one daughter. I have one daughter at home. I have a 20 year old actually that lives down in Texas. As yeah, well, but you so. have one daughter. One at home. At home. Yes. I one. had four boys. See, I would have failed. And <laughs> I would have miserably. simply failed. <laughs> But I got to tell you, I think that's what caught my eye on Facebook when you were doing these because mm-hmm. I'm sitting there shaking my head like, yep, I've been there, yep. done that. Yeah. Well, and, and it's funny, too, because I'll put them up there and then so many people will reply and say, I've done that. I've yeah. done that. I'm thinking, OK, so I'm not the biggest. Idiot You're in the not world. the biggest idiot in the world. No, no. And the reason why I want to share them on my show is um, so other house husbands and even brand new housewives, oh, first yeah. time mothers, mm-hmm. first time. They don't feel like idiots either. Right. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> it's not just if, you. If we can't laugh at ourselves, then what's it worth? That's you right. Know? I mean, that's just exactly. the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. And, and we like laughing at you too, Tony. Well, so everybody likes right. laughing at Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Rex, um, have you, you, what size diapers are you in? <laughs> uh, we're, we're, working, we're working a uh, generic brand number four. Okay. Uh, find that the realized about six months ago like wow i'm paying literally twice as much for huggies instead of just getting the kroger brand exactly actually i like i like the king super ones so raven's hope for getting huggy sponsorship just went out the window (laughs) the regular ones he uh yeah he he fills them up all right so so, (laughs) how did we start wait we're talking about diapers. I yeah, know. we're here to talk about Ev David. What, no, what, how do we digress gonna, into diapers gonna, and, and gonna, house husbands? We're going to talk about Ev David again. But, okay, um, good, good. But Rex, did do you buy um, the Ziploc bags? Now, size four, you have to. You probably should go up to the quart size Ziploc bags. But um, do you put your dirty diapers in Ziploc bags? No, I just use the regular grocery bags. Fortunately, uh, you know they haven't been banned. Okay. So they, uh, they, I find that they tie off the bath, I and mean, then you got to dispose of them. You don't mess with them. You got to put them in the outside garbage can. Put them outside. Well, I use the Ziploc bags. You know, the newborns can fit in a sandwich size, but um, not you... the baby, the diaper, right? <laughs> the diaper. Please, <laughs> I got a new house husband tip of the day coming yeah. around, and, and the great value ones are really cheap too. Okay, so back to of David. <laughs> ah, where are we? Scars, we're we're scarring here. <laughs> we're asking the same question. Where did? Scars. Where are we? What, what's going on? No. 
scars. What does scars mean? Scars. It's oh, that's a great story. Yeah, it's just it's it, every one of us. Okay, as we go through life, things happen to us. Things that sometimes things just bounce right off of us. Sometimes things cut us. Some things cause scars. Some, exactly. It, everybody around has physical scars, and you know we can do what we can to put you know makeup on them to cover them if they're grotesque or whatever we want to call it. But the emotional scars that we carry with us, everybody tries to take those things and wad them up and put them in their back pocket also. Everybody wants to hide their scars, all, this, all the damage that's been done to them in life. Mm-hmm. Well, the truth be known, those scars, they're what define you. They're what yes! make you who you are. <laughs> so why would we not push right. those things out in front of us and let them dictate, or not dictate, but just shine brightly because right. we've triumphed through those things. Exactly. So that's exactly where scars came from because scars is a, is a truly living and active testimony that's going on in all of our lives mm-hmm. right now. Well, and so, I thought about that when they these guys were talking about their childhoods right. and he had a bad one and he had a good one. Well, he needed that bad one to get to where he was going right. and he needed yeah. that journey on that path mm-hmm. to learn what he needed to learn right. to get here. And right. he needed to take a different path. Exactly. But you and, both ended up in the same place. Right. And and like everybody else, I had my scars later on in life. I had, right. you know, my own problems I ran into, my own difficulties just like everyone else and uh yeah, and, and that's why this is such a great song, and I think everyone can connect with it. And it's one of my favorites, not only for the message, but musically, it's one of our more dynamic songs. It's, it's the, the music itself, besides just a, an amazing message that Tony wrote. Um, it's a really, it's a cool song. I like it. I, I listen to that, you know, even if it wasn't ours. You know? <laughs> All right, well, let's take a listen to Scars. Go 
Guess whose turn it is to talk. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob. And everybody's yeah. pointing at the eyes and the fingers and yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So um hold my ground. I'm gonna hold my ground and make you talk. Oh. Tell me about this song. Tell oh, oh whoa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Does he know about this song? Well, I might be the wrong person to ask about that song because Tony it's, Tony, it's Tony, still pretty new Tony, to Tony, it. Right. Yeah, he's learning. Okay. So, but yeah, so, we're getting it. You, Rob, you learned this song. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, How do you feel about album, it? Um, Hold My Ground. You know what? It's it's one of those it's one of those songs that kind of really takes off from the get-go. And the, and the lyrics are pretty self-explanatory. And, you know, whatever kind of trials, tribulations, whatever you want to call it, you're faced with. Um, you know, the big guy upstairs, you know, he'll hold you accountable and he'll also protect you, too. So kind of like, you know, the, when um, Tony was talking about earlier about, you know, you, t- you took it away, mm-hmm. you know, um, whole, uh, at least what I take away from Hold My Ground um, is kind of a, a hymn of perseverance mm-hmm. is that is that no matter what, you're going to you're going to hold your beliefs, you're going to hold your convictions, um, you're going to hold your faith and you're going to hold your ground and you're going to be you're going to come out, you know, much the better for that. OK, so well put. Well said, Rob. Yay, Rob. See, we need to make him talk more. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a listen to Hold My Ground by uh, David. (laughs) At war with the feeling you're stepping inside I push it away and I can't Strong and hold my ground. Hold my ground and face it. Trust in you, you'll take it. Hold my You're at the wheel, I'll make it. I can try and break it. I can try and break it. When I hold When I fall, you wind me clean I'm trusting in you, something not even seen How can I go on if I just walked away? I'm under attack with every day
Slipping. Ooh, I think I I can get this one. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it, yeah. When you slip from your beliefs and... Mm. Ooh, he's mm. making a face. <laughs> he raised his eyebrows. Yeah. Am I close? Uh, yeah. 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 It's... Slim. When you slip... When you're influenced by others and, you're, and you slip and from you slip. what you believe in. Yeah, it's, it's the opposite of standing tall yeah. in many ways. Uh, the original name of the song was uh, Slipping in My Sin. So, if that makes any sense. I mean, the song is, again, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. And this is, you know, one of my favorites, too, because it's so easy uh, to connect with. I mean, it, it's one thing, you know, some of the other, some of the other ones, the, you know, the, the Hold My Ground and Stand Tall are phenomenal um, battle cry songs. And, and, you know, rally around those songs and really fight for what you believe in and, and doing the right thing and... and but what slipping hits me with, I mean, it's the rec- recognition that you know what, none of us are perfect. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to, we're going to fall on our face. We're going to, we're going to slip and not do what we know is right, what we should be doing. But you know what, it's okay. Okay, yeah. I want to ask you a question. Yeah, none of us are perfect, but do you not feel that, like, like I tell people, you can't life can't always be perfect because you wouldn't realize it was perfect if you didn't have the bad times. Exactly. Right. right. So, exactly. so you talk about, you know, slipping in my sin and, and the definition of sin. I mean, some people hear that word and think, you know, the exact opposite of goodness and it's pure evil and, and Satan is what sin is. And, and it's everything that's complete opposite of God and what's good. That's not it. That's not the definition of sin. Sin is, off the mark from perfection so if, if you're 99.999 percent perfect that's sin that's not dead on so there's none of us no one on this planet is sin free mm-hmm. is right. the, we can't attain perfection none of us can and and you know there's one guy in all of <laughs> human history that attained it and you know that's why we you know that's who we follow that's and that's what the Christian faith is about, is, is about recognizing, you know, who he was and, and that he died for our sins because we're all sinners. We're all falling short and we well, all slip. But ultimately we are forgiven. Exactly. Right. And that's, that's what it's about. We are forgiven of those sins because he paid the ultimate price and for I, us. But I also feel like um, sin is like an extreme word to me. It, it is. And that's that's it's kind of like how... Some words no longer mean the same thing they used to mean. Right. And there's just things that we can't say nowadays that right. used to mean something great. And right. now it's something very horrible. Sin, the word sin has, uh, for lack of a better word, evolved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the meaning behind it and what people would consider sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like Steve was saying, <clears throat> you can't necessarily put a definition on it, but you can in, in most aspects. Mm-hmm. Um, so drawing back to the slipping in sin, I mean, we all slip up, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody out there, we always talk about, oh, well, now I know better. Now I know better. Now I know better. Well, same thing. You know? Well, I think there, there, there's a, a total difference between slipping up and sin, though. Slipping up, I feel like life is a learning experience. Right. Mm-hmm. 
but also you need to slip up and learn things to teach our children. Isn't that, you know, But yeah, that's part of it too. But I mean, it's not just things that is it that you sin? know you shouldn't do. Sin is something you know you shouldn't do. Right. Right. Well, that's the thing. And that's the beauty of, of what this song is about to me. That, you know, it, you can tell yourself a hundred times, you know, I really shouldn't, you know, drink too much or I shouldn't, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Right. Um, you, you know, you shouldn't do this. And then, you know what? Temptation happens and you get in the wrong place and you do it again and mm-hmm. you slip up. And we're all human. Right. That's right. what it, is. it means exactly. to be human. And you know what? Forgiveness is there. Right. And to, to recognize that, you know, we're, we're not, you know, a band that says, well, we're a Christian band and you have to be perfect and you have to be high and mighty and you can't do anything. You know what? No, <laughs> that's, that's not what it is. Well, then we need to stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and living, you know, life, you know, a Christian life or, or any life is, you know, you have to recognize you are going to slip. You are going to screw right. up. You are going to make mistakes. And that, you know, forgiveness is there for you if, if you're willing to accept it. And if you're willing to forgive yourself mm-hmm. and move forward and, you know, you recognize you, you might slip up again, but that's not what your goal is. Right. You right. forgive, you, you, you ask, you tell God, hey, look, I messed up again. Uh, I'm sorry and I don't want to do it. And he forgives you, you forgive yourself and you don't move on. And just the opposite is the slipping and sin part. You sin, sin births other sin. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. like uh, a vision births vision or, or joy births joy. You know, whatever you do, if you continue in that behavior or whatever, it's going to cause other things to start crashing down around you. And you're going to right. look back on it when you're down the road going, oh, wow, I started way back there. And mm-hmm. I've made a real mess of things between <laughs> that point and here. So let's go back a little bit and fix it all. Or not fix it, but, you know, start do it the, the right healing way. process. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> let's try again. Yep, yep. All right. Here's Slippy in bio of David. Thing. 
This is Raven with Eggs and Kegs Radio Show here on VRDO, and you're listening to Rockin' Raven! And we're back. I gotta quit talking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I gotta, I wanna play all these songs. You can put playing? microphones in front of us and tell us right, how to talk. That doesn't work well. <laughs> well, I can just turn them down and I'll just talk <laughs> to Rex. All right, Rex, tell me about 11th Hour. Well, actually, it's, the timing is pretty close because Veterans Day is next Tuesday, I believe, the 11th. It I is. Think, I think Veterans Day was established at, like in World War One, wasn't it? I mean, it was the 11th day, oh, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the uh, 11th month of the year on 11-11-11. Um, um, so it, it, the reference in the song is really, oh, I, I think it's really geared toward sort of a no turning back point um, in any battle, uh, you reach the 11th hour, um, it, it's the last minute. It also, I don't know if it's specifically in the, the lyrics ties into God's perfect timing, which is, you know, he doesn't arrive early, he doesn't arrive late, he arrives just in the nick of time, which mm-hmm. is, you know, a, and a lot of times it's, it's the 11th hour for all of us, but that's part of what faith is all about, is, is, uh, is being patient in that. Um, but, you know, the song itself is its probably one of our more aggressive songs. It has definitely a, kind of an 80s flavor yes. of metal to it. And, um, and that, as musicians, yeah. that's so much fun to play. It definitely has that, that, that 80s metal feel to it, the, the hair band metal. The, you know, that, some of us that are old enough that grew up listening to it. So. <laughs> There's a lot of double bass, so uh, it's fun for me. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to listen to 11th Hour right now.
And we're back. Hello. Hey, hey. We are up to our title track of our, um, I mean, we have more, but now we're going to play the title track of the CD, Let It Begin. Mm. Yep. Let what begin? It. It. <laughs> Let it begin. You know, it's funny. We, we kind of went back and forth on, on the name of the album. Uh, and we had this song, Let It Begin, just kind of sitting back there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we realized, wait a minute, this is kind of the first full-length CD, and this is where we're kicking things off, so let it begin. You know, And the song yes. is, is literally about letting it begin. It's about, okay, this is it. It's, it's a very appropriate that it's after the 11th hour. Mm-hmm. Because the 11th hour is saying there is no turning back from here, now it's saying let it begin. Let's get this thing going. Mm-hmm. And let's not turn back. So that's what Let It Begin is all about with, with our faith and with the, basically, like Steve had said, the whole battle cry music. This is a battle right. cry. This is a, let's go get them, boys, you know, type thing. All right. Let it begin. Next, we have Dear Jacob. David's going to tell us about Earth this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David. Tony. David, go ahead. Love David. I've been called David so many times. It's so funny. <laughs> I will get emails to David because it's um, it's of David. People are like, of David? Uh, it must be your name. I was looking at of David. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. 
I've been called a lot. I'm just going to sit back and let you All take right, over. All right, here we now. go. All right, so this is my show now. <laughs> no. Okay, dear Jacob, uh, this song is probably one of the one of the most near and dear to our hearts uh, songs that we have. Uh, it is. I, I, I won't say one of them. Probably it is truly uh, the one song that we haven't perfected as a live performance yet, but there's reasons for that because I wouldn't be able to make it through this song. Now, kind of a Cliff Notes version of the song, uh, our, our management team, their names are, are, are Kevin and Don, okay? Don and Kevin have two sons, had two sons, I should say. Now, Cody is their, was their oldest and, and Jacob is the youngest. Now, both of the boys have a very rare form of dystrophy. Uh, now, it, it puts them into a position of being 100% dependent on mom and dad for everything. Um, I mean, literally everything. And um, it's a progressive disease. It's something that gets worse and worse and worse. And there really is no, there's no coming back from it, if you will. Um, so Cody, at a very young age, uh, they were both born absolutely normal, running around screaming, your average little boys that are just getting into everything. And, and, and you know, mom's pulling her hair out and dad's going, I don't know where the boy is, you know, the <laughs> kind of thing. And then uh, it just, it, it struck them both. I mean, it struck Cody, uh, I want to say, hey, Rex, you know this, at about the age five, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it struck Cody at about the age five, and it, it has a pretty quick onset, and Cody therein became 100% dependent on mom and dad, okay? And then a little bit later, Jacob comes along. And Jacob is absolutely normal. He's the fun-loving little boy, and Cody is watching his little brother go through this stuff. Uh, well, Jacob eventually fell ill from the same thing, and both of them became 100% dependent on mom and dad. Well, so the song is basically from Cody's point of view, talking to Jacob when he was already in that position and in that situation, saying, "Look, you know, I know this is scary. I know this hurts. I know it's 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 confusing, but we're we're here to change the world, and we're gonna change the world just by being who we are, you know." And um, Unfortunately, Cody went to, to go home to be with God uh, not too long ago, and we had started writing the song uh, with both of them in mind and, you know, just really being inspired by this legacy that these two boys carry, and uh, the song just kind of didn't lend itself to being completed for some reason, and then when, when Cody went home, it was like the song just almost wrote itself. It's 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 It's... Like I said, it's kind of hard to actually get through even describing the story because, I mean, if, if anybody out there listening knows our management team, Kevin and Don, um, they're a pair of the most astounding people I've ever met in my entire life. I mean, they, they inspire me to do anything and everything because they do anything and everything, and they let nothing stop them. Mm -hmm. Don, in fact, runs a foundation called The Caretaker's Wish, um, and it raises money and... and, and uh, acquires different things for, for caregivers. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that she noticed early on when she was caring for her sons was that the boys were taken care of, but then you look behind the chairs or whatever, and the caregiver is just a wreck. Right. So she um, decided, wait, we need to do something for these people because they're not being recognized for these mm -hmm. amazing efforts. Right. And not only does she have these two boys that are in this position, but she's taking on this caretaker's wish. And then, and then she took us on, which was like, how, what do you think? <laughs> but she nailed it. And it's, just, I don't know. So this song, dear Jacob is, is literally for everybody to hear the story, but it is, it is inspired by and written by a written for Kevin and Don and uh, Jacob and Cody. Okay, here we go. Dear Jacob. To this world, I was able like you, everything magic and new. I had no idea I wouldn't remain. Life changed forever that day. 
It's even a little hard to listen to it still, it's just because it's it. It's I don't know. I just I can't even put it into words. And and a little special treat that we got at the end of that. Um, when you hear the little whisper at the very very end of somebody, I'm always with you. That is actually Cody's mom, Cody and Jacob's mom. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's just <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I got to stop talking because it's going to get choked up. All now, right. So. <laughs> So we'll play this light and we'll be right back.
back. Whoops. Okay. There goes those crumbs I did again. that. I forgot, to, I forgot to turn that just for Tony's sake. I know he likes yeah, that. that's cool. <laughs> do, 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 do. So that's a fun one, too. I that mean, was. You know, it, it's one of those things, you know, uh, everybody talks, well, you got to throw in a cover. You got to remake a song. You got to do something else. Like, well, you know, one of those old, you know, Children the kids, songs. kids songs. <laughs> this little light of mine. Like, well, we can do a metal version of that. Of course you can. Heck, Korn did a whole album full of it, so why yeah. can't we, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we make we make an album, you know, make a turn a song that a lot of people know growing up, you know, that yeah. little, this little light of mine, so, and turn it on its ear and... We got a rock tune. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys liked it too. Um, so the next CD I want to hear uh, the little engine that could. Uh, <laughs> oh, done. No, no requests. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an inspirational song. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, you can t- metal that up. Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're actually I'm tossing around now. a whole bunch of ideas of, of you know, f- from you know Johnny, Johnny Cash, Cash to. Yep. Um, yeah, who's that? Still, you got spirit. Uh, we don't want to give it away. No, right? no, no. no. There, there's a couple other yeah. old songs that you know that could be. You know, they're obviously Christian tunes or have a uh, could be yeah, morphed it, into yeah a side connotation of, yeah. Uh, right. along those lines. And the thing we could really cover this and change it completely. Uh, but it yeah. t- it takes a little while to to yeah. sink in because I remember when I you know I auditioned for these guys and they asked me like, hey, dude, do you want the gig or you know for whatever reason. Um, because I like to consider myself a very mediocre drummer that's been playing for way too long. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's wrong. Oh, yeah, different perspectives. And you know what the great part about you know his drumming? He's so completely modest too. But one of those little tiny things that he said in that that first night, we'd been talking to three, four, five different drummers. Yeah, and they, they listen to our album and they say, well, you know, you don't have too much double bass in it because yeah, I'm not really good in that, but I can get my way through it. And then. Um, he was the first one to say the exact opposite. It's like, you're going to let me play double bass, Which right? Because I love doing that. <laughs> yeah, double bass. Yeah. Uh, please. We're like, this please? is the guy we want. <laughs> no, I mean, super flattered by these guys all the time. But going back to, uh, to to this light, you know, I mean, we've got a lot of things that we're thinking about in a lot of different cover tunes. But I'll be honest, it takes a little bit to sink in. Because I remember hearing the album and I'm like, these guys just seriously take a nursery rhyme and <laughs> spin it up. So, but I mean, it took a little while to sunk in, but uh, I mean, it's super diggable. I like it yeah. a whole bunch. It's very diggable. That's fun. I think it was Rex's idea. He's being awfully quiet back there. Rex? Are you there, Rex? He probably went to sleep. I'm sorry. Say it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that cold medicine kicked in and Rex <laughs> passed out. That's, his, that's no, his we're, narcolepsy. We're, the this light, how how we wrote it. I mean, it was kind of your yeah, brainchild was, at first, right? That was a perfect example of like I, I'd written it years before, um, uh, probably two years before we started Tony and and uh, early when I joined the band, I just kind of threw it out there, and you're like. Mm, listen to it and it wasn't but like 30 seconds and you're like all right this is gonna sound weird but i hear a nursery rhyme to this i hear this I, and, and it was this light and like the second you sang it, it was like oh yeah that works <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's an interesting one to pull out during a show too you know people we'll, we'll get them singing this little light of mine yeah. and then you know, everybody remembers this little light of mine, right. and then we come in with ours, and it's just like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Did that really just happen? <laughs> yeah, that would be good for my, my thing I'm going to do called Make It Your Own, where you just take a normal song and make it your own. Yeah. Yep. And you yep. did. That's what we're about. Yeah, we did. That was it, awesome. Yeah, and, and I kind of want to mention, you know, we talked about, you know, what we're going to do for the next album, and, and, and like Rex just said, you know, well, that was a song he had written years earlier, and... and he just heard something else in it and put it together. And, and now that, you know, the four of us are, are currently now the what is of David today and we're writing new stuff. I mean, I brought in this bass lick that I had written six, seven years ago and played it and that it was just something I used to warm up mm-hmm. and just, just to get my fingers loose. And, and I played it in front of at least half a dozen other guitar players and they all looked at me and went, huh? And so then I played in front of Rex, Rex one night, and it was like, this works perfectly with something I've been doing for three years. Right. And the, the, it was this... <laughs> You know, semi-intricate little bass like mirrored almost perfectly 
with right. what he was already doing. Right. Well, and that's just that's God at work. Exactly. Yeah. I and mean, that's truly God at work. And and Rex and I, Rex is is a, a he's the one that kind of brought that to my attention. How he would have songs. I believe Scars was one of them, even where I had written it uh, several years ago. The lyrics for it, and he had didn't didn't you Rex? You had the 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 main line for Scars for several years. Yeah, I, that, that was like the second song that we wrote together, and it, it that one, I mean, as Steve has mentioned, it's three songs in one because it's got a whole build up in the beginning, and then and then kind of kicks loose. Um, but um, yeah, that that one again. I mean, we probably have six or seven songs that we had written. You'd written, you know, the poetry, the lyrics. It may as well have been on the other side of the planet, you know. And and I'd written these things, and we just kind of and they just meshed right together. It's like wow, that that <laughs> it normally doesn't happen that easily. Right. And then adding Steve and, and Rob now with the new material is even it's just going in all kinds of new directions, mm-hmm. which is really refreshing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we're having a blast. We actually were having too much fun doing that to practice. We had to. Uh, kind of held ourselves back. We were like, okay, every other practice <laughs> yeah. will be a writing practice. Right. And then the other practice, then the next practice, we'll actually have to rehearse to make sure we can play our songs well live. Then we can go back to writing again the following practice. Yeah. And simply stated, there's a lot of new material. Yes, there so. is. And the, yeah, and that's that's the funny thing about Rex is he does that all the time with all everything. The time. Yeah. So like he's saying, like Steve is like, yeah, we linked up and I had this leg, this lick, and like then Rex came in with this lick and it turned into this song and that was fantastic and everything. Rex does that with like everything, and I mean like everything. We're we're like new. I'm like messing around at practice. And I played some some uh, drum riff. I have no idea what I was playing. I honestly don't. <laughs> and Rex looks at me and he goes, "What is that?" And I'm like, "I don't. Something I just made up. Something I'm just playing." You know. And he goes, "I know what that is." And I'm like, "You do?" <laughs> <laughs> and he just starts writing this song yep. around it just into one of fast. the new ones that we're currently writing yep. right now. Mm-hmm. We need to so, just start recording every it. single practice. Yeah, right. he does yeah. it like all the time, and I still I have no idea what I was. Yeah, you know what I mean? I but he's like, I know say, what that is. Whenever you put drumsticks in your hand, you're going to have to record it on a little recorder because right. Rex is going to test you. Yeah, Rex is <laughs> Rex is like Rex is like our short white Miss Cleo. It's crazy at practice. He just he's like a soothsayer. It's just insane. Uh. <laughs> and he does it during note. he does it during shows sometimes too. Yeah. We'll be doing a song where it's like okay, there's a solo coming up here, and mm-hmm. you know that's usually my my chance to step away and get a drink of water and right. take a breath of air finally. Right. And he'll bust off with some new piece of a, of a solo or something. And, and 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 I have gone to the point I've gotten to the point where I've mentioned it at a show. It's like okay, this guy just blows me away. I don't know what he's gonna do sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> Rex can rewrite guitar solos on the fly. It's, on the fly, yeah, yeah, he's, a, he's a live crowd. performance rewriting the solo. Boy, you guys are you guys are giving me nothing to live up to. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so so no pressure at all, Rex. Yeah, You'll be none, fine. None. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to uh, go to a quick commercial, and we will be right back. As always, Raven on the Rock reminds you to please drink responsibly and always designate a sober driver. Live from the mile-high city of Denver, Colorado, it's Raven's Eye on Global Talent with your host, Rockin' Raven. Keeping her golden eye across the state, across the country, and around the world to bring you the best talent possible. And now, here's your host, Rock and Raven. All right. Well, I'm going to play a little Black Angel from California. And then we are going to get back to Of David. But here's Hard Living Hard Times from Black Angel. Rant. You can't count on the government Smoke a joint, 
We have one of David's song left. Aww. Well, don't on me. Could have wrote more. <laughs> <laughs> I played them all. Mm. And we thank you so much for yes. that. We appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I'm just excited that I have more songs to play on my other shows now except break, besides mm-hmm. break. Nice. There we go. Yeah, keep playing them. <laughs> I definitely Please. will. Please. <laughs> Please. All right. Embers, tell me about it. Embers. Now, Embers was... Um, uh, actually, Rex, I'll let you tell a little bit about this one. We, um, I live in uh, Golden, and, and about three years ago, uh, we had a brush fire, the Indian Gulch brush fire, and it was right across the valley. So we were out there that night watching this thing, and the mountain was just glowing. It looked like a... I actually posted the picture up on Facebook, and someone commented... You know, it looks like embers falling. And uh, someone else said, ooh, that's a cool name for a song. And then all of a sudden he was like, yeah, I got some lyrics for that. <laughs> <laughs> and and so we went to work on it. It's, it's, uh, it's probably one of our, you know, most packaged, well-rounded songs. It's got a good hook to it. It's got a lot of neat aspects to it, but it keeps it in a nice, tight package. And so... Um, I'll let Tony talk more about what the metaphor of embers is as far as, you know, living your life. Right, right. And, and, and what that would be is, is those embers, when, when a fire is burning in the forest, everybody that's been near a forest fire or even been camping has seen little embers or even a house, you know, a mm-hmm. fire in your chimney or whatever, little embers pop off of those things 
And they sometimes go quite a ways. They'll carry right. for quite a distance. And if they land somewhere where the where there's more fuel and you give it just a little bit of wind or whatever, you're going to start up a new fire. Mm -hmm. So ultimately what happens in those big forest fires is there's large pieces of those trees that are burning that and the wind is lifting upward because the heat's rising so quickly and then the top winds will carry it over somewhere else, whichever direction the smoke is going, and, it'll, and that ember will land, start a brand new forest fire, sometimes miles away if this mm -hmm. can happen. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. But uh, the metaphor in that is that each one of us are, in a sense, an ember. Uh, you know, our light, our, our light shines a certain way, whether it's for good or for bad. And, and wherever yeah. we land, we start a new raging wildfire, you mm -hmm. know, because we're, we're spawned from one and then we land somewhere else. And everybody around us therein is, an, is, is affected uh, because we are that new fire. Mm -hmm. And that's whether, you know, good or bad. So it's up to us. We've got to choose, you know, which side of that we want to be on. Right. Do we want to create a good thing or a bad right. thing? Nice. So, you know, we're just carried around and set down where God needs us and pow, there it is, you know. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right, let's take a look, listen to the song, Embers. <laughs> I do without you guys letting me know these songs or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is nine o'clock. It, it is. Nine is. Mm -hmm. That was a very long three hours, but the last two were fun. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. The person that needed to hear it couldn't be on until after we would have been done before anyway, right? That's right. Or the people. Things, people. Yeah. Things Millions of listeners right. we have right, right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
And Brandon, we thank every single one of you for listening. Yes, <laughs> Brandon has a lot of listeners all over the world. I have Very a lot cool. of listeners all over the world. TuneIn has a lot of listeners all over the world. So you're right. Things happen for a reason. Sweet. Glad we got to yeah. share it. Yeah. I'm glad Fee was there to work her magic fingers <laughs> and get us logged in. So, Fee, if you're listening, thank you. and Thank you. Thanks, Fee. Brandon, I did get your message. I'm sorry you're so busy. Brandon just like, he's all over the place. Mm. He's a busy, busy man. <laughs> yes. So thank you guys well, so thank much. You. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. This was thank fun. Thank you so much. And thanks for calling in, Rex, and happy birthday to you. Yes, happy birthday, brother Rex. Yes. Get rid of yeah, that cold. That very special. I'm glad that uh, you didn't get to see me cry on this end. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, tune in tomorrow. That's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll be back. Raven on the Rock is brought to you by Rock and Raven Productions and The Scoop 303. I'd like to give a shout-out to our musical credits for our intro, The World Famous Johnsons, our exit, Garco, and our Raven Raps commercial by Michael Thornbuckle. I'd like to thank Eli Local Littleton for sponsoring us, and you can check out all our advertisers on the left side of our website, ravenontherock.com. I'd also like to thank all the amazing musicians in Denver and around the world for sharing their music with us. 